What's up everyone? Today I'll be replacing the exhaust manifold, catalytic converters, and oxygen sensors in my 1997 Toyota RAV4. My name is Paul Shpakov, and in this video series I'll be fixing up my RAV4 to make it as awesome as possible. It seems like this car is just falling apart. I've already done a lot of work, but now the exhaust is a problem. Let's go for a drive and I'll show you. That little clicking sound is the exhaust manifold leaking. The screeching rattling is the exhaust heat shield being loose. And also when I hit the gas, it smells like exhaust inside the car. The RAV4 has two oxygen sensors right in front of the engine. The upstream O2 sensor has two nuts holding it on and takes a 12 millimeter socket. The downstream O2 sensor takes a 22 millimeter socket. I'm replacing the sensor so I cut the wire and put an impact socket on it. I can't break it loose with a breaker bar and there isn't enough room for an impact wrench down there. Since I'm taking off the exhaust manifold, I'll just leave the sensor alone. The downpipe has three bolts and takes a 14 millimeter socket. There's also a very annoying support bracket that holds the catalytic converter. It has two bolts on the engine and two nuts on the cat. The heat shield bolts take a 12 millimeter wrench. I'm surprised that these bolts unscrewed instead of breaking off. I'll be removing the alternator so the battery must be disconnected now. The alternator power wire takes a 10 millimeter wrench. I'm loosening the alternator pivot bolt and the belt tensioner. With the belt off, I can pull out the two support bolts and pull the alternator out of the car. Now I can reach all the exhaust manifold bolts. These are actually studs going into the aluminum head. The nuts take a 14 millimeter socket. And that's it. Now I can pull the manifold and catalytic converter out. The black carbon shows where the exhaust was leaking past the gasket on cylinders three and four. The last stud on the right was missing. Now I can remove that manifold support bracket. The lower heat shield came off no problem, but the bolts going to the catalytic converter all snapped off. It's not surprising. This stuff is extremely rusty. Let's take a look at this catalytic converter. That does not look good. You should be able to shine a light and see through it, and this one just looks plugged. The exhaust manifold looks pretty good, but could use some cleaning. The stock exhaust manifold and catalytic converter on the RAV4 are made of cast iron, and they're extremely heavy. The old catalytic converter is completely plugged, and this actually makes sense because my car was very slow, and I only got about 19.5 miles per gallon, which I would expect more for a very lightweight car with a weak engine. I ordered a Magnaflow 50827 catalytic converter, which is supposed to be a direct replacement for the RAV4, but when I got it, it didn't fit, so I returned it. Uh, this one here actually looks just like it, and the problem was the downpipe was too long, so it won't fit the car. So I returned that one, and instead ordered the Bosel 099-1639, and according to the picture, it will fit. It looks just like this. However, I ordered it on an Amazon, and this is what I got. Looks nothing like the picture. And upon closer inspection, I see 452827 printed on it, which actually is another Magnaflow converter, which is also the wrong one for my car. So if I can't get the right parts for my car, well, I'll just order the wrong parts and upgrade all this stuff. This is the Walker 16288. It's an exhaust header and catalytic converter all in one. This is for a 1997 Toyota Camry. That car has the 2.2 liter 5S FE four cylinder engine. The RAV4 has the 2.0 liter 3S FE. And the engines are pretty similar and this actually bolts right up. It fits the Camry. It kinda fits the RAV4. I'm also replacing the manifold studs. They all came out easily except for this one. It just takes a little patience and a torch, vice grips, and sledgehammer. I'm chasing the threads with a metric 10 millimeter by 1.25 tap. I put in two studs and it's time for a test fit. The flange matches the head perfectly, but this thing does not fit at all. The catalytic converter is right up against the fan and radiator support. The downpipe is also way off and the oxygen sensor mount is in the wrong place. In the spirit of making things harder than they should be, I'm cutting the flange off this manifold. Copper anti-seize is a good idea for those exhaust studs. I'm getting them as tight as I can with vice grips. I cut about an inch and a half off the exhaust runners and put the flange back on. This time it fits just fine, so I'm going to tack weld the pipes onto the flange. After welding, I cleaned up the exhaust runners with a Dremel tool. The exhaust should flow just fine through that. Let's put that manifold back on the car again. I'm happy with the clearance to the radiator. 
I'm chopping the downpipe so I can redo that as well. I'm using the same studs as the exhaust manifold and I welded a piece of 2.5 inch pipe to it and it's getting tack welded in the right position. Now I just need to add some oxygen sensor bungs. I'm using the original equipment Denso 234-2010 sensor for the downstream, but the original upstream Denso sensor won't fit the thread in type bung. The Bosch sensor can unscrew from its base, so I'll use that one instead. Oxygen sensor sockets are used to install sensors, but they aren't strong enough to remove them. One more test fit and it looks like everything fits just fine. I'm using some high temperature header paint. This manifold is supposed to be stainless steel, but my welds aren't. And you already know how much of a bad time I've had with rust. The oxygen sensors get some copper anti-seize. They don't need to be crazy tight. The downpipe gets some new studs, and I'm using the Bosch sensor for the upstream O2. I'm using the original Toyota exhaust gaskets because the one that came with this manifold was really bad. I ordered the original Toyota exhaust nuts as well. The nut has some tabs at the end that prevent it from getting loose. This manifold and cat is much lighter than stock, so I skipped the support bracket. I'm using a 3 8 inch drive extension and a hammer to loosen up the alternator bushing, then the alternator can go back in. Install both support bolts, but leave them loose for now. The alternator belt wraps around the alternator, harmonic balancer, and AC compressor. Make sure the belt is in the grooves, then use the 12mm socket to tighten the belt tensioner. I like to have the belt pretty tight, but you should still be able to push it about half an inch. With the belt adjusted, I can tighten the support bolts. There's a small bolt that holds the bottom of the adjuster bracket. This one is very annoying and I found a shallow 12mm socket with an inch and a half extension is the right tool. The big alternator bolt takes a 14mm socket. Plug in the connector and connect the alternator power cable. This takes a 10mm wrench. Now that I'm done with the alternator, I can reconnect the battery. I want to make sure the belt is tight and won't squeal. This is also the moment of truth to see if my exhaust leaks. It sounds good. I don't hear any leaks. My RAV4 actually has two catalytic converters. I'm guessing what happened is the car wasn't passing emissions, so instead of designing the engine a little better, Toyota just added a second cat. This is the Walker 53416. I got this on Amazon as well, and it looks like this cat will actually fit my car. How does that saying go? The fourth time is the charm? The exhaust is very rusty, so I'm just going straight to the Sawzall. I'll still have to remove the bolts, but at least the pipe won't be in the way. The gasket and bolts disintegrated, but the pipe looks pretty good. Let's just clean it up a bit. I replaced the front down pipe last year, so these bolts aren't even rusty. The big pry bar will help me get the exhaust hanger off, and I'll clean this up a bit with the wire wheel too. Let's take a look inside the second catalytic converter. It's not plugged at all, but it's still 22 years old and I'm sure it doesn't work. The black thing is the exhaust damper. It's just a heavy piece of metal that reduces vibration. Now the new pipe can go in the car. I got new gaskets and a rubber exhaust hanger from toyotapartsdeal.com. The bolts and nuts are also from Toyota. They have nice flanges and take a 14mm wrench. I'd rather use these than random bolts from the hardware store. Okay, time to start the engine and check for leaks. Everything sounds fine. I think I'm ready for a test drive. The clicking, screeching, and rattling noises are all gone. And I'm not getting exhaust through the vents anymore, so that's nice. It does feel better on the highway. I can keep the car in fifth gear instead of having to downshift for small hills. So maybe it's faster. It's kind of hard to tell because this is still a very slow car. My car definitely drives and sounds better after fixing the exhaust, and my gas mileage went from 19.5 up to 20.7 miles per gallon. I was hoping for a little bit more of an improvement, but this engine has 157,000 miles on it, and the coolant magically disappears, which means I probably have a blown head gasket, but we'll talk more about that later. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.